at um, this presentation will be recording and um, we'll share the um, presentation to of the recording um, with you guys afterwards. And also, if you guys have any questions during the presentations, you may um, you know, type in your questions in the chat box or you know, wait to, um, towards the um, Q&A um, session, then you could ask your questions then. Um, so, so, um, today, um, we have a group of presenters. Um, first, we have Chang, who's the um, Associate Director for PACE Operations. And then we have Kua, who's the Program Manager for Open University. And we have Anthony, um, who is also the um, Program Manager for Open University. And we have Christy, who's the Operations um, Coordinator uh, for o Open University, and myself, Cindy, um, I'm the marketing specialist um, ha helping with the marketing um, materials and stuff for Open University. All right, hello guys. Um, so what is, um, what is an Open University? Um, it is San Jose State University allows non-SJSU student to take regular classes for college college credit without being accepted. So it means that if you are a, say, you know, high school student or other, other college student or even anybody in the community, you're able to, you can experience San Jose State University college, college life. So, you know, join the Open University to do that. Um, especially, um, we, we all go through a rough patch in our lives. So if you are a DQ student, this is the best way to get back to your own um, program. So how do we register, right? So next slide. You can scan this QR code to go to our main website page, um, then find spring semester and click how to, how to register. So there's gonna be a large uh, link that says how to register. Then the website will give you a step-by-step -step instruction on, on, uh, on how to register for each student status. So it could be a first-timer or a continuing student. You will find a instruction there. Next slide. Hi, my name is Trang. For the tuition and fee, if you take the lecture or seminar class, it's straightforward. You can just multiply the 280 per unit to the number of units of the class. Two units is going to cost 560, and three units it will be $840. No order fee, such a campus fee, will be added to the charge. If a class that have an activity component, so it's going to be charged 290 one dollars per unit and 375 for the lab component giving an example there are many classes that have three units with a lecture and a lab usually the lecture will be two units and the lab is one unit so you will separate out those two fee the cost for the lecture will be 560 plus the 375 for the lab, that equals $135. These are the fee for spring, fall, and winter semester. So this formula you can use to calculate for your spring class. Uh, be mindful that if you uh, mean to take the class for the summer, the cost gonna be a little bit different. So it's gonna be charged by your academic level, regardless of what class are you take. Um, if you are an undergrad, the cost is going to be $350 per unit, while the postback or the graduate student is going to pay $430 per unit. So in the spring and fall, it costs a little bit less than in the summer. Um, now it's about time for us to get to know you. So I'm going to launch a poll um, to with two questions, uh, please uh, spend uh, some time to uh, click on whatever applied to you. 
The first question is, is this your first time enrolling Open University? And the second question is, what is your academic level? I have a question. Um, how would we know if we were a disqualified student, like if that was our status? Uh, the registrar office is working on academic standing right now. They will notify students either, either tomorrow or the next day. So looking for uh, the email from the registrar office. Okay, thank you. So if we are considered disqualified, would we be able to still apply to Open University? Definitely. This is a pathway that we are prepared for the DQ student to get back into your academic uh, program. So okay. definitely you would want to check it out. But for if you are DQ in this fall, there's a specific instruction for you and that will be communicated through the registrar office. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So I see that about 97% of us uh, participate in the poll. So I will end the poll uh, really soon and um, to give you a few more seconds if you plan to finish it up. Um, right now, with the first question, I we have about 94% of you are first time enrolling Open University and 6%, um, the other 6% that um, already take class to Open University program before. And for the second question, the academic level, uh, we have 8% um, undergrad and the majority of them are the post back in the post back uh, program. So um, I'm going to stop the poll. Thank you so much for spending time filling out the poll. Next slide, please. Yeah. All right, thank you, Trang. So if there is one page that I would highly recommend bookmarking, it is our calendar, which we are working on updating right now. So if you check back around the week of January 22nd, it should be up and updated. Um, it contains all the important dates and deadlines that you need, such as the first and last day to add or drop classes, as well as payment deadlines, which are important because um, one, one of the many causes for drops, sudden drops is you know not paying your uh, dues on time. Um, so for the first day instruction um, and registration, that is Wednesday, January 24th. So if you want to mark your calendars for that. Um, and another item that we have highlighted is our on our calendar is the waitlist period. So this waitlist period is during the first week of the semester. Um, at this time, you can add yourself to the waitlist for classes that are full. And in the event that seats become available, you'll be able to enroll. Um, so moving on to course schedule, um, to help you prepare, we have a few tips and tidbits uh, to share with you. If there are classes that you are really interested, please email the instructors directly before the first day of class. Um, this helps them know what to expect in terms of enrollment. Um, there are many classes that are in high demand and fill up quickly. Um, these include business, engineering, social sciences, and so on. Um, in the event that initial choices are unavailable, you may want to have backup classes. So that's an important part of planning. Um, you There are certain types of classes that are not available to OU students. So these include internships, supervision classes, and independent study. Um, enrollment times may vary depending on how and when you register and what approvals are needed, if any. Uh, graduate level classes, these are 200 level classes. For these classes, you need to meet a, um, certain prerequisites and must be approved by GAPE. That's the Graduate Admissions and Program Evaluations Department. Um, student must use the OU registration uh, form for these. 
Um, if you have been recently disqualified and need support and guidance, please meet with your student success center on COVID uh, vaccination attestations. Um, I do believe they updated that and they're not um, needed at this time, but we do recommend navigating to the student wellness center to see if the advisories have been updated. And then that should be it for my section. Thank you, Christy. Um, we'll go ahead and uh, go into some of our most frequently asked questions uh, regarding Open University. Um, if your question isn't answered by one of these, we'll still have our Q&A segment at the end of the presentation. Uh, and again, feel free to ask your questions in the chat as well. Uh, so the first question is, does taking an OU course guarantee admission to SJSU? The answer is no. So although students use OP University as a way to clear prerequisites for uh, some programs, uh, and it helps with getting you set for admission or readmission, but it cannot guarantee uh, admission to SJSU. The second question is what to expect on the first day of class. Um, if you are accepted into uh, your class uh, that you uh, that you would like to take, or if you are able to enroll, you will attend class um, and you're ready and set to go. If you haven't got into, if you haven't got to, into a course and you would like to add, um, that class has a wait list, um, you can still show up to class um, on the very first day, um, even if you're not enrolled and talk with the professor to ask for a permission number. Uh, this permission number will allow you to enroll into that class um, and then from there, you'll be all set. I do recommend you reaching out to the instructors of the classes that you plan to take ahead of time. Um, so that way, um, if there's any discussions that needs to happen, um, whether it's clearing any prerequisites that the class has or whatnot, you'll be able to do that prior to the first day. Um, and talking about clearing prerequisites, the third question is, how do I clear a prerequisite to take a class if I took that course elsewhere. So to clear any prerequisites that you have taken elsewhere, um, uh, you will email a official or unofficial transcript to the instructor. Um, it will be up to the instructor to decide if the prior classes that you have taken meet the requirements for their class. Uh, the fourth question, can international students take OU courses? Yes. International students can participate in OP University with the approval um, of the student's current school or program. Uh, so if you are an international student here with us today, uh, please connect with your uh, designated school official or your DSO uh, prior to enrolling, just to make sure that there, uh, it doesn't impact any of um, uh, your status, your F1 or J1 statuses. The next question is, what if I want to add a class that has a wait list? So depending on how small or large the wait list is, uh, we recommend students finding alternative classes just to be safe. Um, you can add yourself to a class that has a wait list, um, or you can also ask the instructor to add you. Um, and we recommend checking your wait list status frequently uh, just to make sure whether, you, uh, whether you'll be added into the class or not. The next question is, how can I get access to SJSU facility for my class that meets in person? So students will need a tower card to access on-campus buildings. When you are officially enrolled in your class, you can visit the tower card um, window inside of the Student Services Center and they will issue you your tower card. Uh, during the first few weeks of the semester, uh, there will be many students coming in and out of the buildings, um, and so you uh, shouldn't have any problems getting in and out of buildings um, until you get your tower card. Uh, we do have more details on our website. Um, I'm going to add a link into the chat so that way if you want to see more details on the instructions on how to get a tower card, you can save uh, that page. Uh, next slide, please. 
Here is our contact information. Um, I know we're going to be covering a lot of things today. There's a lot of questions that we'll be going through and whatnot. Um, so if you have any additional questions after um, today's presentation, you can reach out to us um, by phone uh, or email. Oh, here is also our website. So you can go and browse through and see all of the details for this upcoming spring. Um, and with that, I will pass it to Train. Thank you, Cor. It's now the time for you to uh, have any question for us. I can directly answer um, to you right here. And if later on, if you um, still um, have any question that arise, you can contact us through an email. So, uh, could I, I ask a question? Sure, sure. Um, I was asking if there's a limit to the number of open enrollment courses that one could take. Ah, I was typing the answer. Um, you can take up to uh, you the limit for undergrad student to take twenty four seven units, but only twenty four of those can be transferred to a degree to SGSU. But for graduate student, um, you have to take a look at how many units for your degree, and only thirty percent of the uh, number of units that can be transferred. For example, if your a program that have 40 units total, you can only transfer around like 30% of that is about um, 12 units. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Christopher? Thank you. Uh, I was just wondering, and this was in the uh, chat too, so please uh, skip it if you see that. Um, I was under the impression that uh, like a permission number was pretty much needed no matter what, but um, I... it's needed because like the instructor need to know who's gonna enter the class for um to take uh because for the spring and fall we are uh, offer the open university program on a space available basis, so um right on the very first day, you will either need the permission number so that you can use it to register on your uh, my SJSU if you are able to access that. But if you submit the form, the signature going to serve as a permission number. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Nicholas? I have a question about enrollment. They they can't enroll until the first day of class. So how how do you how does that work? Uh, you don't know if you're accepted, or you have to go to the, talk to the teacher or during class, or how does how do you, why is it the same day, not before? Um. Yeah. Unfortunately, because they like state have to uh guarantee all of the class for the matriculated student, the whoever are pursued in their degree currently. And a lot of classes are very, uh, we don't have enough space for those students. So before class start, you can still contact the instructor. You can um, email them and the email address, the format of the email address is the first name dot last name at sjsu.edu. And in most of our schedule, we listed the faculty for the class. So you can just like do that uh, format, first name, dot last name at sjsu.edu and saying that you are interested in the class and you want to um, participate in. Sometimes the instructor gonna reply to you right away that, oh, I don't have enough space. Or if the instructor are willing to take you in to consider, or to consider, then they're going to ask you to come to the class on the first day. So uh, unfortunately, sometimes the enrollment is not going to be finalized until the third week, especially for those very uh, competitive class that we have limited space. So you can prepare ahead of time and move around the section also. 
Okay, and then when I looked online on on the on uh, the website, I could only find the the winter and fall uh, class schedules. I couldn't find when I tried to link to the spring. It it didn't seem to exist. I think that um, I saw earlier that my uh, Christy has shared the um, class schedule for the uh, spring semester. But please, uh, after this session, please email us at uh, professionaled uh, at sjsu.edu so that we can share uh, the class schedule with you. Okay. Uh, we're going to update the uh, oh. website um in around we, we will complete it uh sometime around um january 22nd so sorry that it's um very close to the first day of class but we can also take a look at the schedule on campus to see what is available um thank you can i ask a question sure sure Please. okay yeah, I, i'm I, sorry I, must I, I, I was called on night oh Oh, sorry. Um, so my question was, you mentioned we should uh, email the instructors with our intent to enroll. Uh, should we do that anytime, including like starting now? Yes, definitely. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. I saw the lie over here. So let me call the name Aditya. Hi. Um, so I received my bachelor's from San Jose State and I wanted to take some post-bachelor courses and then apply to a graduate program in the future. But I was wondering, so with the open university classes that I do take, would that be added to my original SJSU transcript or would it be a separate transcript? It's gonna be together. Um, okay. On your transcript, they will show that you take the class through open university, but all of the credit are the same. Okay, so that modify my SJSU GPA then? Correct. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Alison, please. My questions are similar to uh, Donald's, um, that we can't enroll until the first day of class. Um, I, I live quite far away, so I'm wondering um, what I can do before class. Um, or if I need to, is there anything I can do from home or do I need to just come and submit my form to the professor um, if there is room? Um, definitely, if you take an, an online class, all of the activity are online and the instructor, if um, you can ask the instructor if um, they can add you manually to the canvas shell so that you have the material from the very beginning. Um, that's again, is uh, based on the instructor approval. So if the instructor say that, oh, I cannot add you in before you, we are sure having a space, so you have to respect that. But if there's a class that in person, I would think that you should come to class because it all of the, you show your, uh, really uh, good intention to add for the class and unfortunately uh, there's no way to go around it. Okay. Um, I don't think that the instructor now have a stream uh, version and you can check with that too. Some of the class, the big class or popular class, some of the instructor have a stream version but I don't think it's available to every single one. Okay, thank you. I, I, I heard someone mention a permission number. Uh -huh. How do you obtain a permission number? Um, the instructor will provide you either a permission number so that you can self-enroll in the system or you can submit a form to the instructor so that the signature serve as the permission number. Okay, so just to clarify, I'm mainly working directly with the professor. Um, I'm not working with your department for open university in order to make sure that there's room in the course. Correct. Okay. Uh, but if passing the deadline for registration, you have to submit the late enrollment to our office for approval. So it's depending on the time that you uh, want to enroll or you are 
actually enroll, initiate the enrollment co- uh, process? Yes, I tried to do it online through your website um, and the link wasn't working. So it's, you... it's not open now. It's, okay. Yeah, it's, uh, it's start on closed on uh, January 24th. Okay. Okay. So do that first. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Benjamin, please. If we want to apply for um, an online class, uh, is there a way that we'll be able to join the first class to ask for a permission number or should we email a professor in advance? Um, you you are able to join the first class and actually that is a procedure. You have to, um, if the class in person, you need mm-hmm. to come to the class and meet with the instructor. Oh, no, 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 sorry. Um, for an online class, will there be a way for someone that's not enrolled to oh. join one of these S- online classes? Sorry, the online class, you can email the instructor now and then ask uh, the instructor if they can add you into the Canvas cell, which is the learning management system that we use here uh, so that you can join the class uh, unofficially. And when it's everything finalized and you are official enrolled, you will be able to uh, log in and use Canvas as usual. Got it. Do I need to make a SJSU one account to have Canvas, or is it just a separate uh, account entirely? Uh, it's it's the same, but the instructor same. have to manually add you in the class. Got it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Great. Sorry, can can we make an SJSU account now, or was that something we needed to wait till we get a permission number? Uh have you ever applied to San Jose State at all? No, no. Uh, if you don't have any affiliate to San Jose State, I believe the quit admit link is going to be open up on the 22nd, uh, two days prior to the first day of class. Then you can add, you can create your account then. Right. Okay. Okay, got it. So, so all we need to do, so show up the first day, and then um, get the permission number from the instructor, and then we'll need that to register. Yes. Okay. Correct. Thank you. You're welcome. Hania? Hi. Um, so I was enrolled in the grad program uh, until December 2021, and then I took a break, and then now I'm trying to take open university student uh, like classes. So I used to have an account, but it's not active anymore. Um, So would quick admit work or would I have to get it into my SJSU um, account some other way? Uh, You have to fill out a form to sign up and then they will, the registrar office will reactivate your account. Okay, so where do I get that form and when do I fill it out? Um, can you email us to the address that on the screen so that we can forward the form to you? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Justin, please. I had uh, two questions, actually. Um, so my first one is, uh, so I'm a disqualified student trying to get reinstated. Is the process for this whole thing different? Or is it generally the same? Like, is there anything else that, like, anything extra that I need to do? Um, uh, I think that at this point, I would suggest you to fill out the registration form because uh, if you, uh, this is the first time through Open University after you are DQ, then I think um, you, you should fill out the uh, registration form. But in between, have you... After you are DQ, have you taken any classes at all? No, I just got DQ'd. Um, yeah, uh, just uh, if you are not DQ in fall 2023, uh, then you should fill out the registration form and you can email to our email address so that we can forward you the form. Okay. My second question was, uh, can I take community or can I take classes at a community college at the same time as this? Uh sure. Oh, you okay. can. Yeah, yeah. There's no restriction. 
your goal is to Im improve the GPA, right? Yes. Uh, but I would suggest that um, you may want to contact your previous uh, advisor so that um, they will advise you on what class so that you can be transferred back because sometimes the student just take like any random class and it make um, like you may take longer. So if you are able to contact your uh, student success center um, so that you can uh, to check with the advisor to see if they have time to walk you through. Okay. Mm -hmm. Trang, uh, really quick before we go on to the next student, um, I just wanted to uh, let students know I'm going to be starting a poll for feedback. Uh, your feedback is important for us to improve our program and also our info session for the next round of students. And so I will be having that poll running uh, for the remaining time of the Q&A. Thank you, Kua. So, um, Alex, please. Uh, hi, thanks for holding this session. Uh, sorry to ask a similar question uh, to some of the other uh, attendees. Uh, when we write to the instructor uh, to ask about uh, taking a course as a non-degree seeking student, do we need to be enrolled before they can give us a permission number? Uh, no, the permission number to serve um, uh to the registrar office that the instructor agree that you're gonna enroll because a lot of time that the class uh, need the prerequisite and the instructor have to work directly to the student uh, prior to um, accepting a student because we don't want any student just take any class that set to fail, right? So we just, um, that permission number have to be given to you prior to enrollment. I see. Thank you. Um, I see that. Um, Jocelyn. Hi. Um, uh, my question is similar to Hania and to Justin. Mm -hmm. Um, so I used to I was enrolled, or I don't know if I still am enrolled into Open University. Um, but I due to certain circumstances, I wasn't able to apply for for classes or anything. So I've gotten locked out of my email. I can't, I don't have access to Canva, Canvas anymore. Um, but I wanted to know, is that still okay? If, am I still able to take my classes like that? Yeah, so um, for registration, you have to work with the instructor. And if the online class, the, uh, the instructor can give you temporary access to instruction material in Canvas um, for, uh, the method of registration, I would think that you shouldn't self-enroll. You use the registration form to send to the registrar office. That's a seamless way for you. They will notify you whenever they are done, and they will have some instruction for you to log back in. Okay, okay, cool. Um, sorry, I have a follow-up question. Um, I was trying to take a course that um, I haven't been able to pass, and it would be my third time... Um, trying to take this course, would open university, would it still be the same process or would it be a different process to take this course for a third time? On the registrar office, there's a, a form for you to fill out if you repeat the class for the third time. So that's got to be um, the form that you will fill out. And please feel free to send an email to us so that we can directly you to the form. Okay, awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Alison? Sorry, I, I got my, my questions answered. Oh, thank you. Joseph? Okay, hi. Uh, so when I was looking at the courses for spring 2024 for um, computer engineering, a lot of the, it's for graduate. A lot of the courses say that they're not available for open university, like it's a huge majority of them. And I'm wondering if some of those will uh, open up or most of them are going to stay as not available to open university. I would think as most of them are not available to open university students. 
Yeah, uh, unfortunately, computer engineers in one of is one of the department was uh, don't have a lot of class open to open you. Uh, we matriculated student is hard to find a spot in the regular that for their degree also. So that's why. Um, is there any other class that you computer science, for example, you want to take? Is it? No, my major is computer engineering. So, because uh, yeah. I know that I remember hearing from classmates that if you try and transfer a, even for undergraduate, if you try to transfer a software engineering class to computer engineering, it sometimes doesn't even work. Mm. Even if yeah. it's the same name, like a computer organization does not for software engineers, which was CMP 120, does not count as the computer engineer version of the same name yes and yes. i had taken i ended up had to taking both yeah sorry computer computer engineering is one of the very strict department that we don't have enough space for everybody okay and uh, one other question then um so out of curiosity i know that spring 2024 wasn't open yet but when i tried applying for winter 2024 just to see if there if I could do it at all. Uh, it kept saying I don't have a valid enrollment yet or something like that when I went from one SJSU and I tried following the instructions. Uh, that is correct because our winter is in the second week. Uh, we started on January 3rd last week. So right now you won't be able to enroll for any classes because you need to submit the lay enrollment petition. Uh, all of the classes on almost like one third of the way. So a lot of quizzes and uh, midterm is start to come up. So uh, they won't allow you to add right now. Okay, wait. So it started in January 3rd? Yes. Oh, okay, because I think I tried doing it uh, a bit early. I think I tried doing it in December 27 or something like that. That oh. probably explains it. During that time, we closed uh, registration. Uh, the the registration and uh, ended on December 14 for the winter. So okay. that's why during those times that you don't have the appointment. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, Eugene? Um, you, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Um, so I have several questions. Um, the first one is that um, as I applied to the SJSU like a few years ago, I got a student ID, but it's deactivated because it was too long ago. So can I reactivate it? Uh, you cannot do yourself. You have to use the registration form to enroll for a class to activate it. Oh. So, yeah, the only way that you can activate to start back on the activity is to enroll in the class by using the form. Um, but the thing is that the class that I want to take requires pre-calculus proficiency test, mm -hmm. which is only available to the actively enrolled students. Um, the test, I know that some of the students in the past contact the testing center to arrange some of the, uh, like a private uh, session. So um, they may accept your request if they, uh, their schedule permits. So I would suggest you, if you want to take the calculus test, you can, um, contact that testing center? Um, I contact to the testing center and the answer that I got was the test is only available to actively enrolled students. So then that's the, the, they, they know the answer is no right there. So is there the other testing center that you can sign up to do a test and then you can show the result to the instructor? Uh, oh, so test it first yes. without any student ID and show the result to the professor to get a permission code? Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. You're welcome. Barresto? 
Uh, hello. Uh, sorry, I'm an international student and I have a master's degree in software engineering and technology, but uh, I was interested to take some courses uh, during spring. Uh, yeah, I, I don't, I didn't understand really the process, so I should now send an email to the instructor to, uh, yeah, just let me get into the course. And then I will get a permission ID, and on twenty fourth of Jan January I will, uh, yeah, fill the registration form, and then. Let me ask you that's... some. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, that's correct. Uh, let me ask you some more question before I answer, um, your question. So, sure. uh, you are an international student. Um, are you currently attending another school or uh, not at no, all? No, actually, no. Currently, so, I'm working, but I'm interested to take some courses. Yeah. So if you are working and you are, I would assume that you already have your working visa, then yes, you can uh, create an account and sign up with San Jose State. And there, there won't be any international student fee for the class that you take to open university. But this program won't provide uh, an I-20 for your uh, student visa. So unless that you have your working visa uh, valid validation during this time, then you can take the class here. But taking the class here cannot go the other way, vice versa. So, and okay. again, the process, is, if you have never have any San Jose State ID, you can do the quit admit link, uh, check on our website to create your profile. And then when you have the instructor permission number, then you can use that to enroll. Otherwise, you can also use the registration form to enroll. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Sophia, please. Hi, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I was just looking for um, clarification about whether prereqs are required for undergraduate courses. Um, um, so I like to to register. Do like do we need to have some sort of official or unofficial transcript from a pre from my a different university to show that we've completed the prereqs or for specifically for undergraduate, how does that work? Yeah. So there's a two type of prereq. If a test prereq, yes, you have to show a document that you already passed the test to enroll. If a class prereq, you can use the permission number from the instructor. And then some, it depends on the instructor. Some of instructor check your prerequisite passing. Uh, verification, but some other instructor doesn't think that it's um um it's necessary. Then they just give you the permission number. So uh, again, to summarize, if it a test prerequisite, yes, you have to show. Like for example, the writing uh skill test uh WST for the undergrad that some of the SJSU study course, you have to show that you passed that test. Okay. Um, and then I guess I have a second question. Uh, is it possible to see like the course syllabus uh, before or anywhere on the website right now? Like if just for choosing courses, I want like more detail than just the name. I think you have to contact the instructor to acquire the syllabus. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Anyone else have any question for me? Uh, yeah, I had a question. Um, well, one on the MyS issue right now for open enrollment says I don't have access to enrollment at this time. Would this just automatically go away on the 24th when first day of classes? Uh, you locked into your MyS issue. I don't think it's going to go away because you... Uh, used to be a student here, right? So it's yeah. not gonna go away. 
the only way that it's going to open up for you is when you already, you submit the enrollment uh, registration form, the open university registration form, and then the registrar office enroll you into the class. Yeah, it's not going to go away. Oh, okay, so I have to fill out that form before. Yes, mm -hmm. correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then also, so I was looking at a course and there's multiple lecture sections open, but there's only one lab that's open right now. Mm -hmm. And in the off chance that I'm able to get a lecture, but all the labs are full, is there anything I can do or I'm kind of just out of luck? Um, I think that in the past, I have the student that get the permission number for the lecture, but cannot get any to the lab. Unfortunately, in that case, uh, we cannot accommodate you in because the lab needs like, some equipment and the reason why they don't let you in because we are uh, run out of space. So mm -hmm. we wouldn't accept anyone to go just take a look because you need some time in the class, lab, you need equipment to work with. So we just want to make sure any enrolled student have that chance. So unfortunately, no. Okay, yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Um, how would you recommend finding out who the instructor is for um, the upcoming semester for a class? Is that something you would find through the um, the the class schedule search or yes. elsewhere? Uh, class okay. schedule, yeah. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, um, I'm sorry, I already asked you about the pre-calculus proficiency test. Sure. What I got email from the testing office that is that the student ID is required. Uh, no, I mean the other uh, testing center, not SJSU center, because they already, they already replied to you that it's only for SJSU students. So if you have any other testing center, like uh, I think that it has to be approved testing center. It's like uh, you can sign up with them and do the test and then provide the result with your registration form to the registrar office. Not um, at SJSU because they, they previously already replied to you that they, they, they won't accommodate. Um, what kind of like a testing center do you mean? I I am have you checked like the community or sometime that like in the test some other testing center they do have um I can do a research but mm -hmm. you that one I think that it, you have to do on your own too because like if the testing center senses they say no we cannot force them to administer what student okay yeah if i cannot find anywhere can i send you an email about it yeah sure okay sounds good thank you you're welcome any other question i can cover here Also, um, in the chat, uh, uh, Christy had mentioned that the registration form will be available on January 24 at 9 a.m. So right now, we can directly direct you to that website, but the form is not going to be able to, you, you won't be able to download the form because like uh, any enrollment is going to be open on the first day of class. So you can take a look at the website, but the form won't be accessible at this moment. Um, I have one last question. How long does it usually take for the form to get accepted? Because if we, it's only available on the first day of class, um, does it usually take like the same day or like would we have to wait like a few days or a week? 
Um, if the instructor sign right away, uh, and if you have one one class on that form, uh, it come to the registrar office if within the day. This may take like uh several day two two days. So uh registrar office pretty um on the first day first few day they are uh, pretty attentive to the form so um the turnaround time is not gonna be um long but um it may take several days for you to access the canvas because like when they activate the account there is a process and then in the past we have seen that it may take up to a week so the best way is to contact closely to your instructor so that you can be on top of any excitement or any quiz that the instructor want you to know. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, to relate to that question, um, I've never like used the form because this is my first time doing Open University. Um, do we need all the courses that we want to take on that form before we submit it? Or do you say just one course is fine? I would prefer to have everything on the same form on one form because that's easier for the registrar office. But sometimes it's going to be delayed on your end. Um, so you may watch out for the form when you submit all. And if like you see that one instructor doesn't hold back, like uh, one instructor that is inside the form and home back, you can notify us right away so that we can, you can make a copy of that form and like separate it out. And then sometimes the registrar office will give you like a, a, a sub special like a, a transaction so that you can access to other classes while uh, waiting. Yeah. Also, um... like let's say I have courses on Wednesday and then Thursday, would it be fine if like, I fill up all my Wednesday courses, submit that just so I have that done and may, make a separate form for the Thursday. That's fine too, yeah. Okay. So we have about five minutes for the session. So last call if anyone You have our contact number. Hi, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Oh, I put a question in the chat. Um, I'm not sure if you saw it. Oh, sorry. Why I speak to you? I didn't uh, take a look at the... Uh, let's see. Oh, you looking to take a class, but you don't see on the list. Uh, that's probably... That's probably the department. It's depend on the department. Okay, because I haven't seen it for some time. So I was just wondering, do you guys not offer the class anymore? Or uh, That is the department decision. So okay. do you know which department is? Um, so it's a bio class. I'm assuming the science department. Uh, there's a biology department. So you okay. can, yeah, you can search for that. And you can also email us and we're going to take a look at the email address to share with you. You can reach out to that department. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So just one general reminder because I think that um, Kuo already covered to access to the building um, before you enroll for the class, we don't grant it any access to student. So unless the, you are officially enrolled, um, you will go to the Bursa office to get the student ID and we program a chip on that ID so that you can access to the building that, you, that your class is in. Um, therefore, before that time, you can just come to class and wait for any other student that open the door and you can enter together with them. So um, that is one thing that you have to uh, make sure that you come a little bit early if you want to be in class on time.
that is only applied to the in-person instruction. If online, uh, you don't have to get the ID at all. Uh, the Bursa office is located on 10th Street, at 10th Street in Student Service Center. You know that we have the um, parking garage structure on the top and uh, Bursa office, registration office. Registrar is um, on the ground floor. Uh, if you have your ID before form 2022 or form 2021, I don't think it's work because that doesn't have a chip built in. So after pandemic, we have revised all of the, we have our new ID. So you cannot use your own ID to access our building at all. I want to clarify um, for the ID. Um, I just recently been a disqualified student, so I took my in-person classes in the fall 2023 since I'm technically like a third year. But um, well, that happened to me that I have to reactivate my card for a new card as an open university. Uh, no, you can use that. So if you already uh, have classes as a regular student recently. Okay. If, let me see, uh, I think that um, if you already apply, there's instruction on our page, so you can just follow the instruction, it's applied to you. Uh, we have list several categories, so it's, it's going to be, um, you have to read it to find where you are. Uh, uh, in that group to follow specific instruction. Okay, thank you. So one last call. Anyone have any question for me? I'm sorry, I have a question. No, I couldn't find the class that I need to take with Open University. Is it okay that? Uh, but I see it's uh it's with the um SJSU registered students, and is it okay that I email the instructor and ask to be added? You uh, can, you can, yeah. Oh, no, it's a code. Uh, it's a it's a uh, depending on um whether or not instructor is willing to to open the class to Open University students, it is possible for me to get in. Even if right now it's not open to uni uh, open university students, the majority of the class, if they say that it's not open uni uh, to open university student, but I still see that the student email the instructor anyway. So it's yeah, uh, some of the class that uh, they want to fill up the space. So even mm -hmm. though I I don't know how. Uh, if it's not open to open university, I don't know how the department is depend on the department strategy. So, mm -hmm. um, but like if even if you see that there's still space and then you email the instructor, you cannot question their decision. If they say no, you have to accept that's a no. Yeah, I understand that. I'm just mm. asking for a possibility. Mm. It, it's possible that they might if they have space yeah i that that's why i say that you made you made so i see the student just email the instructor so but uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah that's very helpful thanks you're welcome all right um it's 102 right now and i Hope that you find this uh, session informational and helpful to you. So, oh, Mason, I saw good, that. Good afternoon. My apologies. Okay. I was uh, just getting it through your colleague, uh, Kai Vang. Appreciate it, by the way. Another thing is I was just going to ask is since I am academically disqualified since spring 2022, is it possible, like, I'm just speaking just in general, like, if, it, if I'm financially not uh, able to pay, can we still get reinstated even if we take, like, an accelerated course 
like during the semesters of winter or summer? I'm just curious, just just in general. Um, sorry for open university. We don't provide any financial aid. No, 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 no. I understand about the financial aid part. I understand that part. What I'm getting at in terms of reinstatement, like what happens if we take uh one of the accelerated um uh sessions like you know winter or summer just in gen just curious yeah um can we can we will we still get reinstated like say for example we passed and then you know we get, can we can we go through the reinstatement process or do we have to go to like the fall and spring because it's longer uh winter and summer have the same accreditation with like spring and fall so if you pass any of our classes um it's gonna stay on your transcript and it will be counted to work as any other classes and would that can, would, can i use that for like reinstatement sure oh okay no that's what i meant i like i said i understand about like you know the financial part of this and that because um of course they'll give it back to you once you're reinstated i just want to know that part if it's applicable if we take it during a, an accelerated session yes. and not just fall or spring because you know it's longer you know yeah yeah um because like for fall uh, for winter and summer even though it's short but the material the uh, content of the material we cover all of the basis exactly the same way it's faster it may be condensed but like all of the key point for the class it's going to be warranty offer in that session and then and of course like if we uh, pass good we can do the we can still do the reinstatement process right afterwards Yes. Thank you. My apologies if I got you confused at first, man. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, I'm like, I'm wait sorry. a minute. No, no, no. I, I know about the financial part. I'm just asking if it's better <laughs> because it's more convenient, too. especially for for my major since majority of it's in person. So, yeah. Long story yeah. short, not to get too personal, I'm just going through some financial stuff. Yeah. So if it's accelerated, as long as can it, the reinstatement process is there, it's all good because. For financial aid, and this is for anybody in general, um, yeah. we can still submit our form. And I'm just wondering if that's going to be applicable if we take an accelerated session, not because, yeah. oh, this one's like long because we have an extra four to five months. Yeah. You know what? Um, thank you for bringing that up. Actually, some of the class that is hard to find to stay during spring and fall, we advise students to look into summer and winter. Because for summer and winter, everybody will pay the same. Um, we open the class for open university students like two weeks after the matriculated student enroll. Yes. So which is about like six weeks or sometimes it's like eight weeks away. So you have a better chance to get into the class. Right, right, right. Yeah, like, and that's what I heard because you know I I talked to the top like from the from our uh, from you guys as president to the president and to the um uh, and to my uh, uh polit uh, major director. So I was just curious. Like I said, the main thing, like I said, for all of us, that I'm assuming that it's just the reinstatement thing. Yeah. Because of how of the acceleration, and to be like, all right, do we get accepted or not? You know. <laughs> yeah. uh, but appreciate it... the but appreciate the the price comparison that is the same thank you yeah so if you are interested into the summer uh we are prepping for it right now and you can check back in around april because registration will be open around end of april for open university student right do you guys have that uh posted and i might probably register this semester this i mean as in spring but um do, do you have the forms in general uh, we will post the form sometime in end of March because we are working through the semester right now. We prep for spring and right after that, it's going to be summer. Cool, because I took one of the forms that one of your colleagues put the link on and I just and I just saved it, sent it to myself via email. So just check back in like right after the spring starts, like in the middle. March, end of March. In the March? Yes. All right. Appreciate it, Ms. Duang. Mm -hmm. Good luck Have to good you. To you. Appreciate yeah, it. Yes. Uh, all right. Oh, can I ask? Sure. Sorry about it. 
Um, so I'm still confused with the testing center thing. Does it do you mean that it's should I should take it outside the S SJSU for the yes, outside uh, of SJSU, not not at SJSU. Yeah. Oh, but as long as you have the roof that you pass that class, or uh, even if you want to take uh, that class again in community college and then show the verification later on, that's work too. So as long as you have any roof that you pass that class, um, the you can contact the instructor. Um, the class that I want to take only requires the pre-calculus proficiency test. I think so. The proficiency that means that if you either have the pre-calculus class or you pass that test. Yeah, the proficiency right here. Yeah, that that is the 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 the, the term of the the requirement. So um, in that case, I would suggest that you email to us with your question, and then we can go on. And we can explain more if you have any more questions on that. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. All right, thank you. Let's call it today, right? So, did we have... If there's a number of questions from the students who are here today, we could end the presentation here. I thank you everyone for attending. If there are any questions after today, feel free to reach out to us. Um, and again, our website will be updated in the coming weeks. And so as you are browsing through the class schedule and looking at your registration instructions, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us if you have any questions along the way. Um, We'll go ahead and end the info session here then. Thank you, everyone. I hope you all have a wonderful day.